Welcome back. This is Alan Olson's American Dreams, the keys to life success, where we talk about how to live the life that you want to. What are your dreams? What do you want out of life? What defines success? I'm here today with J.D. Vaughn of J.D. Vaughn Consulting. J.D. is a book author, a publisher, even did his own radio show for uh, uh, a short while. And uh, J.D.'s specialty, though, is finding resources. Finding resources for people who are starting their own business. Resources in the area of people and money. Welcome, J.D. Thanks, Alan. So, G.D., I discussed on last week's show that there are many individuals struggling in today's job market. Many are turning to an entrepreneurial road to get back into their career. Mm -hmm. I understand that you help entrepreneurs start their business ventures when there may be a lack of resources available to them. Absolutely. We help, them help entrepreneurs in that space and also entrepreneurs that have a business that don't have the resources to employ best practices. We help them find the resources to do it right. So... Yes, we do work with entrepreneurs in finding uh, funding, and we also work with existing businesses to find how to get more out of less. Hmm. What type of business startups do you see most often in your profession? Right now, services. We're seeing a lot of services. Uh, and it's interesting, um, the Association of Venture Capitalists uh, listed the, the, the businesses they're investing in. And number one is services, software and technology. We're seeing biomed grow. Uh, but basically, we're seeing software grow, and and looks like there's some growth going to take place in that software area. So people in Silicon Valley ought to be excited about that. There's a forecast for growth in that space. You know, it's really interesting uh, when uh, the question is asked, well, where should I be directing my uh, the business ventures, and what should I be looking at? And oftentimes, when people pose that question to me as a CPA, I'll say, if you want to know where to be pointing your direction to look at the demographic trend absolutely absolutely look at the trends and don't look at what happened before a lot of us what's happening now in our economy a lot of folks are looking backwards and trying to do the same things that don't work I mean there's an interesting book a great little book about three or four years ago who moved my cheese quit going back to the same trough and expecting things to be different if you talk to an immigrant today and say is there opportunity in America what do you think you're gonna say compared to the rest of the world absolutely but we see it a little differently because we're looking at the past so we, as we look forward, figure out how we can get more with less. How do we deliver? This is what venture capitalists taught me when I worked for three venture firms, venture funded firms. How do you deliver extraordinary results without ordinary support? How do you still deliver? Right now, I mean, we talk a lot about, uh, well, the economy, the government, etc. Go find more customers. Get focused on that. But in answer to your question, we're seeing more services, and we're seeing businesses grow in the area of uh, software. We're also finding folks in the services business for example, like executive assistants. You know, I don't have an executive assistant anymore. A lot of folks don't. And so those folks are out of work. But we're finding executive assistants taking on five, six, seven, eight, ten, ten different executives to work for. Instead of getting paid $4,000 a month from one executive, they're getting paid 500 a month from four or five or six or seven. Those kinds of services are starting to grow, and we're watching people make that transition. You know, I actually am an example of the executive assistant. My executive assistant resides 750 miles away from my office. <laughs> my last executive assistant said she wanted to be 1,000 miles away from me. So, okay, I like it. I like it. Well, this is explaining probably why she moved to where she is today. So. But that's, that's interesting. It's, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, often that in that demographic trend that, that's been pointed out is that the next 15 years... 80% of today's workforce, the baby boomers, mm -hmm. will be retiring. Absolutely, absolutely. So five jobs for retiring and only one being replaced. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing more and more uh, baby boomers require the products and services coming out of biomed. So when VCs, venture capitalists, are looking at where do I put my money, I mean, one of the growth areas absolutely is, is biomedical. We're seeing a tremendous growth in that space. We had a, a client start up a, a new... Um, company basically it was all about mapping DNA mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, he took a public it's about his seventh or eighth company that he took out public but uh, I think the cost of mapping a DNA today is uh, you know is getting into the thousands of dollars where mm -hmm. earlier it was at tens of thousands of dollars and uh, you know as technology continues to improve uh, you know so will so will our medical advancements absolutely absolutely the, the thing we're telling clients today don't get concerned about things like the government regulations. Don't get concerned about taxes. Get concerned about finding more customers. Have you ever found a business problem that couldn't be solved with more customers? No. <laughs> Find more customers. That's what makes it work. 
Yeah. Um, and that's why the discipline, I think... You that, want paying customers. Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, I've been in circumstances to find resources for one client where we, abs we fired some customers because they weren't the customers we wanted. They weren't, you know, 80% of the revenues for most businesses are driven by 20% of the customers. And if your productivity, if, you're, if your resources aren't spread over in that same kind of way, if you're not investing your resources where your revenue is coming from, fire some of those customers and then reinvest the resources to get larger customers. That's one way to find resources. You know, I'll, I'll say um, also with the customer base, we found in the world of viral marketing that Absolutely. that has a lot of value. Uh, there was a company a few years back that I invested in it called Skype. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Yeah, that, uh, it, and, and it was pennies on the dollars. The whole concept was we're going to take over the telephone company and make it free. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first thought is, well, yeah, that's fine, but how do you make money if you're not sending a bill? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the exit strategy there, I think uh, eBay paid some $4 billion for 30 million users who were using the service for free. And and that went on. eBay went on to sell it. I don't recall if it was Microsoft or someone else. You know, you know, picked up Skype. But but this viral marketing concept about the number of users that you have has has value. Absolutely. There's a there's an entirely new discipline in graduate schools of business now called free to paid. How do you convert and pull customers in with a free offer and convert them to paid? That's an entirely new discipline. And we're watching customers, especially in telecommunications, conferencing, audio conferencing, and Skype. Watching customers grow leaps and bounds. I have a client, he's adding 25, excuse me, 250,000 new free customers a month, but he's converting 15% of those. So it's a wonderful concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give it away and then convert it. So you're, you're just really in a numbers game out here. So. Well, absolutely. If you put more people in the funnel, more prospects, more opportunities, then you have more opportunity to close business and bring more customers to the table. And, and be more selective about the kinds of customers you want. So how does a person, if they're uh, if they're displaced from work and they're saying, okay, I want to go start my own company, mm -hmm. but JD, I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> well, the, the internet, first of all. I mean, entrepreneur.com has a whole series of disciplines and questions and Q and A's people can go through to discover what kind of business they ought to be in. But but I, we normally run up to two kinds of clients. One that says, I want to start my own business because I want to follow my passion. I'm going to do it because I, I need to do it because to fulfill some inner need. And the second one is, I need to make money now. And if you need to make money now, that's a different answer than uh, I need to fulfill my inner passion. Um, making money now probably has to do with leveraging the things, the people, the network you have today. And you can leverage that and you can migrate it, just like the executive assistant we talked about. Instead of one client, she redefined it. Now she has eight clients, eight employers instead of one employer. You know, that's really interesting that... Uh and, and you hit on a real trend right now, the number of people who are out there who are underemployed. Absolutely. They're, they're just trying to survive to get by. Mm -hmm. But I, I, love the, uh, I love the concept that you bring up and address about having a passion for what you do. Absolutely. And my concern about business in America today, people don't have the funding and they choose not to pursue best practices. We can't do that. Find a way to pursue best practices regardless of your funding. Now, that's what we do at J.D. Bond Consulting. We help people find the resources to deploy best practices. Because if you're just doing it halfway, guess what? You're not going to experience extraordinary growth. Um, and, you know, I have a friend in the venture capital business. Says, venture capitalists beat all their pigs with the same stick. They do make you more disciplined. They do teach you how to use all your resources. It's not, it's not, a, it's not an accident that immigrants make up a large portion of our entrepreneurial base because they see it differently. And I think they've also, uh, you know, yeah, exactly, been through the old school of uh, they're in survival mode, and if they have a will, they'll find a way. Absolutely. You know, driving out there. Well, this is all interesting in the, the trends that we're seeing today. You know, um, what we see is a lot of people walking in our office, and they'll, they'll, uh, they'll be looking at, uh, because of the, the cur current world climate, mm -hmm. um, they're often searching for how do I find more predictability in markets where there's a lot of uncertainty? Well, what we recommend normally is find more customers by finding more prospects. Find Work your way backwards. Increase the number of prospects so that as the number of customers has decreased, you can, you can do more conversions. So let's say instead of 10 prospects converting to two customers, now you have to have 20 prospects to convert to two customers. Just add more to the funnel. 
spend more disciplined time. I, like we said earlier, I can't think of any business that couldn't solve most of its problems with, more, with just getting more customers. Yeah, and, and I guess with technology today, it makes it more convenient to expand your boundaries. You're not necessarily confined to your local markets, but you're moving out further and further, and not even within this limited this country, but also to worldwide. And, and what I'm finding with a lot of my clients, um, they're spending their time putting out fires playing defense instead of playing offense. Uh, I, I'm working with one client now, he, he, he doesn't have the time to go create more business because he's spending his time putting out fires. So he's playing defense. If you find yourself playing defense, fix that so you can play more offense. You can't score points if you're not playing offense. That's interesting. Nadine, what do you think about today's world and economy? Well, you know, what I, what I wanted to ask JD is about seed money. Do you help? Let's say I have this passion or this business or, or this great need and I want to start a business, but can I go to the bank? and just get a loan? Well, what do I do to get my business rolling? Well, normally, there, there are about five or six normal places to find money to start a business. Uh, the first one a lot of people think about is FBA loans. If you've got good credit, you've got a good credit history, you can go down that road. You can do a home equity loan, personal loans, get a private investor. A lot of people say, what about venture capital? That's difficult. If you're asking me about venture capital, you probably don't qualify. There's another one that I spend a lot of time in that's called private placement memorandum. That's another way to raise money, just, just like you're a public company, only as a private investor. Yeah, it's all interesting. We're, uh, we, we need to take a break for our sponsor here, but uh, we'll, um, we'll be right back. This is Alan Olson with America Dreams, the key to life success. We'll be back in a moment with more information on how you can find money in our economy. We're here today talking with J.D. Vaughn of J.D. Vaughn Consulting. 